Be born and raised. Start trouble on the playgrounds the start of my days. Then it started trouble outside of school. They said you're moving with your auntie in a neighborhood in Bel Air. Something like that. What's up, y'all? I can't even get the damn theme song right. So, she married Rico. Doing the damn thing. Just enjoying this 84 degree day here in March. And, um, trying to get my stroll on, but I want to share my thoughts on the, um, Mm, hold on a second. Yeah, it's rude to chew gum and try to talk. So, all right. I just want to share my thoughts on on Chris Rock's selective outrage. I watched the last night on Netflix, all right? <clears throat> but before, I just want y'all to know, before I get started, that I wrote this little, this little short story a few years ago. I decided to dust it up a little bit, dust it off, and... I put it in a PDF format, so if you like to like a copy of it, it's entitled The Greatest Pain Ever Felt, Conversation with the Absent Biological Father Who Never Wanted to Be Found. And so, uh, yeah, it's a story about when I found out by my, my biological father who he was by pure accident. I guess the secret was never supposed to get out. Shout out to my aunt, Pat, who passed away in 2010 from pancreatic cancer. She kind of let the pet cat out the bag. And so the journey continues. Just called. I, I give you the title. It's only $10. It's in a PDF format. So if you hit me on the Cash App, Rico the Opinionist, R I C O T H E, uh, the, what's that? T H E O P I N I O N I S T. Uh, hit me with that. Please send me an email address and I can email you a copy directly to you also on the paypal so uh yeah i'll hit your boy up if you like a copy of it so let me get to my comments on the the, the uh chris rock selected selective outrage all right and i'm not gonna take long with this i just want to say if i were to rate the comedy special itself as uh, overall a through f i give it a b plus yeah, I, you know, I think he, I think Chris Rock has more screaming than punchlines. You know, he had, had some funny moments. You know, I chuckled here and there, you know. But he is still comedy gold, comedy legend, comedy royalty. But, uh, let's see, he, uh, let's see. He talked about a plethora of topics. Uh, before I get to the main thing, what people want to hear about, I want to say this. I didn't care for his use of the N-word just so callously. You know, I just thought a 60-year-old man, you know, no, I guess age doesn't have anything to do with it, but yeah, it does. It has something to do with the maturity of it. You would think that um, maturity-wise, you would you would think that it would just kind of cut it out, and then he talked about how rich he was, and he's, he's made millions of dollars, and you would think, you know, I guess... Uh, it doesn't matter if you have millions of dollars because we got our very own homeboy, hometown boy, John Morant, with millions of dollars and still behaving as an N-word. So, and it's, a, I'm just saying, when do we, when do we stop? You know, when do, when do we evolve from that, that word as a people? But he used it through and I suffered through it because I guess I wanted to get to the, I guess the main reason most of us were watching that, that special. Uh, let's see. Uh, it, it did quite a few jokes, right? And, uh, it's, I think it depends on the person. Hit or miss. Hey, I give it a B plus. There was some punch lines in there worth a chuckle. Uh, I like the one about dating older women versus younger women. And I see a lot of people are talking about the, the, the joke he did about the trans, but I was, that's the point I decided to, <laughs> that's the point where all of a sudden I felt the need to go and, check my mail and I left outside of my, my apartment to go and check the mail on that I guess he's talking about that I don't know just did it <sighs> came back so he's talking about older men younger women no that was cool among other things uh woke he talked about the woke thing he had talked about abortion I'm like, just just a bunch of stuff but let's get down to the nitty and the gritty 
Because throughout the show, he, he said something. He made a joke about Snoop Dogg. He's like, look, I don't need any more problems. I don't need another rapper mad at me. So that was kind of like the build up. Then I think he said something about, uh, I think Buster Rhymes or something. I don't know. But he, but he mentioned another rapper. He said, hey, y'all know, I don't need another rapper mad at me. Then he got to the point about Will and Jada, about Will. And I thought it was, uh, you know, let's everybody slow down a minute. Because uh, let me tell y'all how I felt the night I watched that. I, I wasn't watching the Oscars, but I watched uh, someone sent me the video of it. And of course, it's been playing over and over. But that first moment when I first saw it, it did something to me. I felt, I don't know, I felt very uncomfortable. Almost, almost like I felt, I don't know, I, I became a little emotional. I don't know, the tears, just, no, they, they just, I don't know, I did. I felt it was really heavy. I said, but God damn, really, Will? I mean, you know, why'd you do that? And then people went, went to back and forth debating about, you know, well, he was protecting his woman. He was protecting his woman. He shouldn't joke about a woman with alopecia. It turns out none of that was true. She didn't have any damn alopecia. You know, people just jumping on stuff. That, that, that lied. You know, people went into the whole gender war. Well, black man supposed to stand up for his woman. All of this and all of that. All of that went by. And Chris Rock never said a word. It's been over a year. He never said a word. Never hinted at it. Hinted at it. So I think it was very smart of him to hold on. And I read somewhere he got paid $40 million for this Netflix thing. He knew. I guess Netflix knew this thing was going to fly off the shelves. <sighs> widely uh, talked about and distributed. So, uh, but that night when it first happened, it, it, it bothered me. It bothered me for a long time when I saw that because I just couldn't believe it. I watched it once and I watched it twice and I never wanted, wanted to see it again. And uh, And because for me, I uh I, I watched it and and you know when the first the slap happened, you know, and then Will became all belligerent. Keep my wife's name out your effing mouth. Oh, no, live on TV on the Oscars. You know, I'm like, wow, really, bro? And I'm telling you, man, I was a I'm a Will Smith fan. He was my top my top three top five actors of all times. I appreciated his image. I appreciated his music. I appreciate his movies, except for Three Degrees of Separation and Legends of Bag of Vans. Wild Wild West, up in there, but, uh, and that superhero one he played when he's the drunk, what was that, the drunk superhero, when he let Celise Sherry Theron kind of beat his ass, I ain't like that one. Uh, I'm gonna get to it in a minute, I'll remember, his, I'll remember the name in a minute, but, yeah, but I didn't like that one, but other than that, for me, Will Smith could do no wrong, but that night, the Oscars, and it was a very significant night too, because that was an actual, you know, Jada was upset about Will not getting uh, nominated for an Oscar for a concussion. And that's, no, oh yeah, I, I didn't think concussion was that great, but I, I, I like Will, and I went to the movie, but I, I think that Will probably should have directed or produced the movie, but not starred in it. I think someone else would have done the movie justice because the, the topic, the topic of the movie about concussion and foot athletes, football players in particular, you know, getting banged up, hitting in the head and stuff and getting this CTE. And it was a good message, a good story. But Will Sonata, Will Sonata acted in that movie. Uh, he should have maybe produced it or directed it or something. He should have gotten one of those cool African actors or a brother who could pull it off. So it lets you know, actors, y'all are not supposed to be in everything. You're not supposed to portray everybody, you know. And so that night at Oscars, Will Packer produced and directed the Oscars that night. Uh, Will Smith was up for Best Actor for the, 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 uh, what he did with uh, Serena Williams' dad. He portrayed Serena and, and Venus' dad. And I loved that movie. I thought it was awesome. He did a great job. And I was rooting for him to win the Oscar. And that night, a lot of black people were nominated for awards that night. And I just, and I said, you know, and I put up a, I put up a meme. I said, you know, the very night that is considered the black night of the Oscars, that's when black on black crime occurred. 
So I can't help but think that Will might have been, and I said it then, I'll continue to say it, it was something just off about that. I, I, I can't help but think that I think Will ass was hired to do that. He was paid to sabotage that momentous night. Because even Samuel Jackson got a lifetime Oscar and he was it was presented to him by by Denzel and you know hold on let me get across here. By Denzel Washington. It was it was an awesome night for African Americans. And Will and Will purposely ruined it. Then the guys he knew it, he knew he had screwed up. Cause after all of that, all those different actors went down to console him and all that, and saw Denzel and Benedict Cumberbatch and all these other people and who else? Some other people were consoling him. And then when he when that fool won, he get up there, couldn't hardly speak for all the snot and tears come out of his face. No, I was just put here. Uh and I was here to protect. You no, know, protect black women. I like bullshit. Get over you. Get get I mean, let me say this right. Will, get help for your trauma, man. We know about the story how your father, you know, beat your mom and all that. You had to witness that as a kid, so you made it your mission to make sure no other woman is attacked. I get it. You were giving your simp cape early, so you tried, I guess you chose that night to let it fly on behalf of a woman who didn't even deserve it. And Chris Rock addressed that as well. Yeah, it's your wife, bro, but who cares? We're over it. And I, and, and I still... And I still want, I, you know, with all that, I still want to see Will win. I think he's better than his situation. I think he's better than that. But that night, I just, oh my God. It just, something just left my body when I saw that. I'm like, dude, not only did you physically assault another black man on live television that was considered one of the most prestigious nights of television. Everybody got tuxedos and ball gowns. You decide to get up there and act as if you were at some kind of rap show or somewhere. Or some kind of heavy metal show. To go up there and use that time to have, to express your selective outrage. And if y'all hadn't seen the show, Chris Rock broke it down beautifully. And so, as Chris Rock was sharing that piece, telling the whole story, I felt that same feeling of hurt and disappointment, not at Chris Rock, but I felt his hurt. I felt his disappointment. If y'all really pay attention, if you watch it the first time, go look at it again. You know, that whole segment when he's telling it, he said, I love that dude. No, he said the N-word. I love that. Love Will and all of that. And I believe it. I believe him. Because I was disappointed. Tremendously disappointed. And so it's Chris Rock was giving his his monologue and telling his story. I felt myself becoming that emotional again. I felt myself leaning on in, in every word that he said because as I looked in his face and I felt the anger and hurt and disappointment as he was sharing it, you know, I, I just, it, it's like, you know, it's a damn shame. And I, I, was, I was looking forward to him. He, he fought it off. He was about to probably break out in tears. Because that was, that, if you ever felt that kind of deep disappointment, it's a disappointment and a hurt and a betrayal, man. It's just something that, that rocks you to your core. And when you listen to him tell his story about what happened, you, you, hopefully if you have a heart or a soul, you'll, hear, you'll feel what I was feeling as Chris Rock was telling his side in, in the Netflix special. And uh, and, and and he did it at the right time. He at the end, after he, when he said all this, he chose to hit me. Everybody called him a bitch. I mean, y'all just check it out. I'm not gonna do any spoilers, but he was right. It was it was unfortunate. And as as Chris Rock was speaking, you know, it's like the volume on my TV set went up higher and higher as he spoke. Because he was speaking to God, God's only truth. And it was. It was very disappointing. And so, but then, when he dropped the mic, I continued to look at him. I said, that's a man that's been holding that in for a whole year. And hurting and disappointed. And you can see it on his face when he's talking. You know, 
the pain, the disappointment, the betrayal, the hurt. And so, if you're going to check out the, oh, check out his special, you know, check out everything, but when it gets to that part when he's telling what happened, hey, play, just, just, just look at him and listen to him. You know, cause, uh, it's definitely something. And so, the next day, there, people were commenting and all that. They would give him applause, like, well, good for you, Chris. You said the right thing. You told the truth. That's right. We got a lot of different responses. But then there were some folks who was like, damn, he ain't over there yet. Or now you want to tell it. And I saw on Facebook, somebody said, I don't want to listen to Chris Rock belly aching. Y'all see the, the, the misandry, the disrespect when it comes to black men and pain? It's almost as if we're not supposed to have any thoughts. It's almost as if, you know, black men are not supposed to feel. We're not supposed to react to being assaulted. Like, again, they're telling Chris Rock, you ain't nothing but a comedian. Suck it up. Be a man. They're always telling black men, telling men in general, men in America, be a man. But had a woman gotten, gotten a woman comedian got slapped in front of the world, you think these women commenters or these beta male simps would be telling her, suck it up? You still talking about that? Let it go. So I need you black men, on the, who, or men, period, particularly black males. If you never, never, if you never heard of the word misandry, go and look that up. Misandry. And my S, my S A N D R Y. Misandry. Go and look that word up. It's the hatred of men. You know how they love to sling around misogyny. That's a misogynist. It's a misogynoir. Misogyny. Like you have a dislike for women. No, there's a heavy, heavy and original dislike for men, particularly black boys and black men. Nobody wants to, nobody wants to see black men function unless they're doing something sexual for them, sports, entertaining, or something like that. They don't think black men deserve to be around or alive or even speak unless they're speaking on behalf of others, mainly women. And we got a lot of beta males out there who live to only talk about how women need to survive and how women need to do that, how to, you know, and, and but they look past the boys. They look past the emotional development of boys and men, you know. Being a mental health person myself, social work, master's level social worker, licensed master's level social worker, licensed alcohol and drug counselor who worked for 27 years in the mental health field and addictions field. I know this. And also being a, a black male in this society, and I see it, and I hear it, and it needs to stop. You know, black men and, and men in general are people too. We're not here just for your resources. We're not here just for the lift push, pull, or drag for you. We're not your, your labor. And so, I didn't, I didn't, again, you know, that, I thought he did a great job on that, on that piece. And, uh, and, uh, hope more people get to see it. And I was, how's it, how it's going to affect Will, Will and Jada have, they have not responded. And I don't care if they do. And none of them they can really say. If Will decides to respond, Will, if you're listening, if you're watching this, bro, again, I want to see Emancipation because I think it's a uh, it's a good movie that needs to be seen. It's not. I don't think it's about slavery. People are like you're tired of slavery movies. I think it's about one of triumph. And also, I I enjoy the director the director Antoine Fuqua. I think he does good work. I, I love it when he directs Denzel Washington. He always does a good job. He's done other movies as well, but I like Antoine Fuqua. Matter of fact, should there ever be another Black Panther movie, I think Antoine Fuqua should direct the movie. Hell, if he can write it, but I, I'll trust Antoine Fuqua to put some masculinity and put some male leadership, black male leadership back into Black Panther. You know, no offense to brother uh, Ryan Coogler, but he told us what happened later on. If y'all been checking him out, he said, uh, you know, Hollywood changed it. He said he wanted to be more about a mother, I mean, a, a father and his son, but Hollywood, they put that agenda on it, and that's why you got Wakanda forever. 
Hell, that's why he got the first one too. It wasn't that great either. But the second was definitely a feminist agenda. Sup, Nico, Marlon, what's good? So damn uh, the Black Panther movies, unless someone like a Antoine Fuqua directs, if there's ever gonna be one. Yeah, Antoine Fuqua might need to direct New Blade too. But when I understand, they're gonna have an agenda in that one too. So uh, I'll pass on the New Blade. And I'm tired of watching Agenda a bunch of, a bunch of bullshit. So, uh, but if Will decides to respond, I hope he responds and not let Jada write something for him because she's a jerk. We're not impressed with her at all. I know. And then there were some women like, well, I appreciate what Chris you know, expressing, but he didn't have to call women names. He didn't call women names. He called Jada a bitch. Not women. And, and women got it bad. When, he, when a man is talking about one person, y'all say it plural. He's calling women out of their names. He didn't call women out of their names. He called her by her the behavior of bitch. And that she deserves it. It was terrible. Tried to tell y'all. But that's that, no, that's that set up a will. Should you decide to respond, just say, hey man, I'm sorry. You got it. You win. I appreciate the special. That's what I needed to hear. That's what the world needs to hear. And, you know, hopefully, sincerely this time, man. Hey, oh, in other words, you got your lick back and you got it back royally. Hey, can we be friends again? And Chris Rock should respond, yeah, after you divorce that broad and become the man you want to be. All right? But anyway, it's your man Rico the Opinionist. Y'all check me out. I'm on YouTube. Y'all share, like, and subscribe. Don't forget my PDF, my little short story, 50 pages of The Greatest Pain Ever Felt, conversation with the absent biological father who dared to be found. It's only $10. Hit your boy up on that cash app. Dollar sign Rico the Opinionist. If you send that, if you send that cash app or PayPal, please send me an email address so I can send it to you. And if you decide to purchase a short story, please let me know what you think after you've had an opportunity to read it. Other than that, y'all be cool. I will talk to y'all later. Peace.